One more question before we take questions from the um, from the audience. Um, speaking of, well, you said death and forgetfulness. Let's leave death aside and talk about forgetfulness. Eleven years ago, when we last talked, when you were a Writer's House Fellow, we talked about aging and forgetfulness. And I wonder, and this is eleven years later, <laughs> and I wonder um, what it's like now to be, yesterday you had the experience of a room full of 20-year-olds reciting from memory a poem you wrote when you were 20, Some Trees. I guess that's a specific version of the question. The big question is, at this point, you have so many decades of poems that you consider to be worth saving, worth printing, worth reading, others reading. What's it like? Well, one version of the question is, what's it like when you pick up an early, early poem at a reading and read it? Is it do you remember the guy who wrote that poem? Um, what is your relationship to the early poems? And do you remember that that John Ashbery? It, you know, is there something advantageous about getting to the point of age and some forgetfulness and putting out a new book with quite a, a number of poems, original but also Ashberian, if I may? What kind of distance is there? Uh, what kind of defamiliarate? familiarization is going on when you look at your early work? Well, it's all very strange to me. Uh, if I had known when I was 21 and when I wrote that poem that uh, 65 years later, 65, well, 64, uh, uh, young students would find this Oh, meaningful, uh, and apparently much more so than the poems that have followed over the years. Uh, <laughs> uh, what would I have thought? Would I have written, tried to write more poems like that? I probably did, actually. Um, but uh, it's uh, it's really weird to be this old and to be uh, communicating with people of young and younger younger and young ages and uh, have and to realize that one never really imagined how this was all going to play out uh, just realizing that it has somehow uh, last two lines of that poem, Some Trees, are, our days put on such reticence, these accents seem their own defense. Um, I don't know how reticent that 20-year-old 20, 20 was. Reticent as in shy and also not sure about speaking or writing. Um, but the consolation in that last line for that young poet is that the these accents, presumably the poem, the 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 beats, the feet, the syllables of the of the poem itself, can stand by themselves. They don't they don't need to worry about how shy or reticent the poet is. And I th I mean I think you're it's safe to say you're constitutionally I don't know about reticent but shy-ish, and have the poems uh, have the poems done for you what your shy self couldn't do, or, or, and I'm thinking of the young Ashbury, but maybe now too. Um, do, do the poems do the work for you and you don't need to be there for them? Is, is it true that these accents seem their own defense? And your puzzled expression makes me think that you're not sure what I'm asking, but I'm going to give you the microphone anyway. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, I'm really not sure what, what you're asking. <laughs> The reticent boy who wrote that poem. Yeah. Saying at the end that the poem will do the yeah. for me. I don't have to worry about how shy I am. I'm not sure that I meant the poem by these exactly. accents. I might have meant the the trees. Mm -hmm. um, because they're kind of painted. Yeah. Uh, but it's. Uh, but accents has many. Yeah. There. Trees, the way the leaves are, 
um, a, a chorus of smiles painted on. Yeah. But also the poem itself. And I guess that there me merely being there means something that it's it's uh, it's enough that they are are there. The the being part of it is uh, somehow subsidiary. If that makes right. any sense? I don't think it yeah. does. 